1951 or 52, Virginia was out of school. Jerry and I were probably, uh, what? Seventh or eighth Sixth grade or, or seventh or eighth grade. My dad had a hernia operation. The doctor told him, he says, in the wintertime, you take take your family and go to Florida and get recuperated from that hernia. So we loaded up in the car. I can remember we got over on 118, got stuck in the snow, and neighbor uh, guy over there pulled us out. And anyway, we went to Florida. I think it probably took us five or six, at least five days to go to Florida. <laughs> five days away. But we went fishing every we're day. We're trying to do it in two. <laughs> Sorry. We went fishing every day and shrimping every night. Mm. Shrimping, fishing in the ocean and shrimping at night in the Indian River. And you hang a, you hang a light over the water and that would draw the shrimp and you'd take a big dip net about that big around and that long and dip in and get your shrimp and we'd probably come home with 100 or so shrimp and we ate fish and shrimp all winter long. And oranges. A lot of oranges. Which we picked. That we picked. One time we were down to the Banana River Bridge fishing off of the bridge. That's down at Titus. Coco. Coco. Coco Beach. Yeah, we lived in Titus, but we went down to Coco Beach and here come this guy virginia was fishing with us and here come this guy and he had his eye on virginia and <laughs> that's history oh uh, what it was the history now what was his name <laughs> his name was morris clegg he was an airman he was in the air force patrick air force base which was close to where we were renting a little cottage and you boys didn't scare them off, huh? Well, they tried to. <laughs> well, first of all, um, he tells it that he always carried his fishing rod in the car with him. And so he was he had it that day, and he was going down this road, and he saw these two boys with their sister. And um, he thought... I'd like to get acquainted with that little group. And you couldn't <laughs> find a parking place because people would park along the road and get out of their car and fish. And so he said, oh, she's probably married, got a couple kids, I'll go on back to the base. So I went down the road a little piece farther and he said, nope, I got to find out. So I turned around and came back and found a parking place. And he said he deliberately cast his line to go across Larry or Jerry, whichever it was, <laughs> their fishing line so that he would have to got tangled up, reel up and get a little bit closer. And um, that's what he did. And he struck up a conversation with Larry and then he struck up a conversation with me and he said, are uh, you catching anything? And I said, no, just a couple of little old blowfish. Yeah. And uh, he, as he tells it, she didn't know she was about to catch a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, or it's uh, you got hooked, lined, and sinkered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's not the end of the story. He said, if I caught... Do you have a telephone? And I, no, we didn't have a telephone. And he said, would you go out with me if, if I came and picked you up? And I said, I guess I You would. better believe it. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I guess at that time we made plans that he would come over the next night. Well, Larry and Jerry, being the nice guys we were, <laughs> they decided that they would um, pull the fuse fuses out of 
<laughs> out of the doorbell? <laughs> no, no. Out of the house. <laughs> out of the house. And it was he tells us that he walked up to the door and as he was walking up, all the lights went out. <laughs> he didn't know quite what to think. It must have been Jerry, I don't remember. I kind of think it was Jerry. <laughs> and uh, But he came on up and um, my daddy was not happy with me going out with him because he said, you know, this is a guy here that you know nothing about. He might have a wife and a bunch of kids in some other state. I think he did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, he ended up with a wife and a bunch of kids yeah, and a bunch of grandkids. Yeah, he did. <laughs> And I said, Daddy, we'll just sit out in the car and talk. We won't go anywhere. And Daddy was okay with that. I was 20 years old, but he still worried about me. And so I got to know him in that way. And another night when he came over, we were just going out for a joy ride. He didn't have any money. So we went to play Linda Beach. You know that's a nudist beach. No. Well, I've heard. It is. It, was, it is. it wasn't thin, but I have heard. It is. I have heard. <clears throat> and um, he was just singing along and wasn't paying any attention. And the first thing we knew, we were off the pavement and on the sand. Oh. And we were stuck. <laughs> we could absolutely not get it out. Well... He said there was a little cottage down the beach that we could see a light. He said, I'm going down and see if they've got a telephone. We can call mother and daddy's neighbor had a phone. He went down there and, no, I think he said, I'll see if he has a rope first and see if we can, my, we can pull it out. The guy said, no, I don't have a rope. Slammed the door in his face. Oh, no. We figured other people had been bothering him about getting stuck. <laughs> so, Morris said, well, we either spend the night here or start walking. <laughs> and I said, let's go. <laughs> and we walked. I believe it was 13 miles back to Titusville. Oh my, 13 miles. 13 miles. It was Indian River City then. Yeah, but, I, but we went to Titusville miles. and got, oh. a, got a cab from okay. there. Because Indian River City would have been a little farther. Four mile more. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the mosquitoes were terrible because there was water along the side of the road and it was horrible my shoes were rubbing a sore place on my heel and he says this will really be something to tell our children someday won't it <laughs> <laughs> it sure is <laughs> all right i'm gonna stop it because it's been eight minutes okay